Hi, this is Dave Myers with Paper Trail Financial with a short video on how to book a new fixed asset into QuickBooks. Okay, here we are in Dunder Mifflin Paper Company and we're going to want to open the chart of accounts and add two new accounts. So to open the chart of accounts we press Control A and then for a new account Control N. And we want to add a new fixed asset and I'll call this delivery truck and then save and close and we want to press control N one more time to add the liability account for the loan so we'll choose loan type and from the drop down here we want to choose long term liability and I'll call this truck loan and then save and close now optionally you could add two additional accounts, a sub account for the depreciation of the asset and a sub account for the loan interest. There are two ways of recording the purchase of a new fixed asset. A journal entry is the easiest way, especially if financing is involved. You can enter the debits and credits manually in just one transaction. If you're not comfortable with the debits and credits, the forms in QuickBooks can be used to do the accounting for you. But you might not want to use this method if you're financing and having it fund simultaneously with the purchase and you're using online banking since you'll be creating transactions that won't show up on your bank statement. To make a journal entry we'll go up to the company menu and choose make general journal entries. I'll put in the accounts first. The asset is the delivery truck and I'll put in the memo truck purchase and for the financing we're going to put in the truck loan and we're also going to assume a down payment so we'll put in the bank account the purchase price let's just say twenty thousand dollars and we'll finance nineteen thousand and we'll put a thousand dollars down and then save and close now I'll generate the balance sheet and we can see $1,000 came out of the bank. We have a $20,000 uh, fixed asset for the truck. And if I scroll down, we can see a long-term liability for the loan of $19,000. I've erased the journal entry, so now we can use the forms to do the uh, same transaction. In this case, let's assume that the financing came first. So we will go to Record Deposits and receive from I'll go ahead and enter a vendor we'll just do add new and I'll call it um, finance company the from account is going to be the liability account the truck loan and I'll put in a memo and the amount will put in the same as last time is nineteen thousand dollars for the loan To purchase the truck, we're going to go to Write Checks. In this case, I'm going to have to add another vendor. I'll do Add New, and we'll just call this the dealership. For the account, we're going to use the asset account, which is Delivery Truck. And the purchase price is $20,000. And we'll put the memo in Truck Purchase. The net effect of this is we're going to credit the bank account for $20,000, reducing it, and debit the uh, asset account. I'll generate the balance sheet again. And we can see the bank account was reduced by the down payment. We have the delivery truck fixed asset of $20,000, and we have the $19,000 truck loan as a long-term liability. QuickBooks has a fixed asset item list which you can get from the list menu and I'll open it up and hit control N. Here you can enter uh, the purchase information and when you dispose of the asset the sales information. You don't have to use these items if you don't want to. If you do you should know that the book value of the asset on the balance sheet is derived from the actual amount on the transaction not the amount you enter in the item. If you choose to use the fixed asset items, 
Make sure when you're recording the purchase you use the items tab and not the expenses tab. When we make a payment on the loan we want to use a split payment. For example I'll use enter bills and we'll enter the finance company and we want to use two accounts. First the liability account for the loan, the truck loan, and also the expense account for interest. This credits account payable, increasing it, debits the loan, reducing the balance, and increases the expense for interest.